In this video, we're going to use some information provided by Google Maps to calculate your average speed as you travel between two points on a map, in this case Boston, Massachusetts, which is a point near where I live, and New York City. Now Google Maps tells me that the distance between Boston, Massachusetts and New York City is 225 miles, and they tell me that it takes 3 hours and 59 minutes to travel that distance. So we're going to use this information to calculate your average speed. And we're going to make one more assumption that your speed is going to be constant during this trip. So to begin this problem, we're assuming that your speed is constant. So we can use the relationship that says speed equals the distance you travel divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. So remember, speed is distance per unit of time. And this equation is only valid assuming that we're traveling at constant speed. That is equal distances in equal amounts of time. Now in this case, the distance that we're going to travel is 225 miles and the time it takes us to travel this 225 miles is going to be 4 hours. The next step is to divide 225 by 4, in which case we get 56.25, and our units are going to be miles per hour. So our units are going to be miles per hour. So Google assumes that your average speed while you're traveling between Boston, Massachusetts and New York City is going to be 56.25 miles per hour. And that's assuming that you're going to travel 56.25 miles every single hour. And that's what it means to travel at constant velocity, equal distances in equal amounts of time. Now the speed limit on most highways in the United States is 65 miles per hour. So my next question is, how long would it take to travel that same distance if you were now traveling not at 56.25 miles per hour, but at 65 miles per hour? And again, we're going to assume that you're traveling at constant speed. So in this case, we start with the same relationship that says speed equals the distance divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. And again, we're assuming you're traveling with constant speed, equal distances in equal periods of time. So now we know the speed of this person. We know the distance that they have to travel. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the time it takes for them to travel that same distance. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for time. So to do that, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by time to isolate the time parameter. So what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. And notice this t cancels out with this t. And then we get a relationship that says that your average speed times the time you're traveling at that speed equals the distance you travel. And since we're looking for the time it takes to travel this distance at this speed, we're going to divide both sides of this equation by the speed. And when we do that, notice this term cancels out with this term. And then we get an equation that says t, which is the time it takes to travel this distance, equals the distance you travel divided by the speed that you travel this distance at. So in this case, this will be 225 miles. That hasn't changed. And then you're going to divide that by your average speed, which is 65 miles per hour. And when you do that, 225 divided by 65 works out to be 3.46. And our units are going to work out to be units of hours, which is a unit of time. And that's going to be your answer. So by traveling at 65 miles per hour instead of 56.25 miles per hour, you save about 15 minutes of travel time. Now before I end this video, let's just take a look at the unit analysis. So we're going to take a mile, and we're going to divide that mile by a mile per hour. So the first thing we need to do to simplify these units is we're going to multiply the bottom by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply a mile per hour by an hour over one mile. Now what I do to the bottom, I have to also do to the top to maintain the equality. So I'm going to multiply the top by an hour divided by a mile. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Notice this term divided by this term is the number 1. So mathematically, I haven't violated any rules. So now the next step is this will cancel out with this term. This hour cancels out with this term. And then I get a mile times an hour divided by a mile. And this mile will cancel out with this mile, and I'll get a final unit of an hour, a unit of time. And that's exactly what I got right up here. So one of the important lessons is to be consistent and make sure that your units work out properly. One of the easiest ways to check for errors in your mathematics is to make sure that your units of measurement, so in this case time, yields a unit of time as well.